Now, medical science offers you proof positive. Yes, medical science offers you proof positive. No other leading cigarette is safer to smoke because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. Cigarette program starring Red Skelton. With David Forrester and his orchestra, our singing star Anita Ellis, Gigi Pearson, Verna Felton, Pat McGeehan, and yours truly, Rod O'Connor. It's a pleasure to bring you Metro Golden Mayor's popular comedian and the star of the Raleigh Cigarette Program, Red Skelton. Thank you very much. Al Skelton's back and Marjorie Maine got him. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How are things tonight with you, Rod? Oh, I'm really in the green tonight, Red. I went out to Santa Anita today. Oh, good old Santa Anita. The annex to the Bank of America. <laughs> Did you take Mr. Raleigh to the races with you, Red? No, he hasn't been feeling so well. He's getting that California spring fever. What's that? That's double pneumonia that's approved by the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> well, truthfully, Red, the weather has been wonderful out here the last week. Oh, hasn't it, though? I was over in the park this afternoon. It was so hot, the little squirrels were sitting around with their fur coats unbuttoned. <laughs> the sponsor's brother gave me that joke. <laughs> Tomorrow he'll be back on the road selling Raleigh's again. <laughs> well, say, speaking of Raleigh's, did Mr. Raleigh go back to Kentucky? Well, not exactly. We, we went down to the airport, but they couldn't find seating space for him on a plane. What happened? Raleigh's back in Skelton, got him. <laughs> well, I heard about you talking to Mr. Raleigh, taking him to the fights the other night huh? at the American Legion Stadium. Oh, boy, and did I see a knockout. Boy, what a knockout. <laughs> Too bad her husband was with her. <laughs> Mr. Raleigh really enjoyed the fight, and we had good seats. I was sitting between two fat ladies. Were they really fat? Fat? I felt like a Florida grapefruit between two California oranges. <laughs> hey, Anita, did you enjoy the fight? Oh, yes, Red, but what was that thing that fell out of the fighter's mouth when he got hit in the jaw? That was his mouthpiece. Gee, nowadays some lawyers will work any place to make a dollar. <laughs> You're proud of that, aren't you? Guys? You're setting television back ten years, right? There. Say, Anita, do you like prize fights? Mm, yes, I thought the fights were exciting. You know, I used to be a fighter. Really? Mm -hmm. Were you like Jim Corbett, stand up and box, or like Dempsey, just slug it out? No, I was more like reconversion. Somebody was always holding me up. <laughs> Did they ever carry you out on a stretcher? No, I had silver handles sewed onto my shorts. <laughs> Did you know that I used to be a fighter? I mean, uh, did you know I used to be a fighter? <laughs> Boy, you'd never know it the way you're wrestling with that line there. <laughs> you were a fighter, David. What did they call you? Uh, Battleship Forrester. Battleship Forrester, huh? <laughs> yep, they gave me that name because I always had to be convoy to a neutral corner. <laughs> I think I'll loan you out to Jack Kirkwood. Well, were you ever convoyed to neutral corner, Red? No, I had a bird dog. It used to point it out. <laughs> well, truthfully, Red, you don't look healthy enough to be a fighter. Well, I'm in good shape considering I was very puny when I was a baby. You know, when I was born, I was so puny they were going to drown me. Why didn't they? They were ashamed to be seen carrying me down to the river. <laughs> Is life a tough one? I'll say it is. When he's in training, there's no, <laughs> there's no wine, no women, or no jute boxes. Well, what does he do for entertainment? He breaks training. <laughs> and if Rod will break in here now, I'm sure he has something of great importance to say. Now, medical science offers you proof positive. Yes, medical science offers you proof 
positive. No other leading cigarette is safer to smoke because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. Yes, exhaustive scientific tests of America's six biggest selling brands certified by a jury of 14 distinguished doctors, including eminent throat specialists, have just proved conclusively. No other cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat irritating tars, so no other is actually safer to smoke. See if you don't agree, Raleigh's are right. Right for taste, right for throat. Try Raleigh's. Enjoy Raleigh's rich tobaccos. That milder, smoother, more satisfying Raleigh flavor. Remember, medical science now offers you proof positive. No other cigarette is safer to smoke because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new, smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. And now Anita Ellis sings, um... <laughs> you'll have to help me. What is this? A motto mio. A motto mio? Mm-hmm. It's from the new picture, Gilda. I'm going to introduce it tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, you better sing something else. I can't pronounce that. <laughs> Must be a Scandinavian uh, number. <laughs> Amor mio, love me forever. And let forever begin to When we're together I'm I'm in a dream world Of sweet delight Many times you've whispered It was just a phrase that I'd heard in plays I was acting a part But now when I whisper Oh, me Can't you tell I care by the feeling there For it comes from my heart To know or never my love, my darling, my arms must hold you and hold you tight. Amor mio, love me forever and let forever be. The story from the Skelton Scrapbook of Satire is entitled Telephone. Our characters are fictional. If there's any similarity to persons living, they're imposters. <laughs> Chapter 88 of Telephones is entitled I Want a Telephone. This is the story of Willie Lump Lump and the trouble he had to go through to get a phone. Hey, where's the guy who gives out the telephone? <laughs> service, service. May I help you, sir? Ah, uh, shut up. <laughs> I want a telephone. Have you entered your application? Yeah, I entered my application real early. You'll find my name right after Alexander Graham Bell. <laughs> Have you ever had a telephone before? Yeah, and I got bills to prove it here. If you want a telephone, you'll have to pay this old bill, and then I'll put your name on the waiting list. Well, I'm a veteran. Does that make any difference? Oh, yes. Yes, if you're a veteran, yeah. I can put your name on the preferred waiting list. Now, you're talking. How many are ahead of me, huh? Well, let's see. There were three veterans' applications this morning. Only three? Yes. Mm -hmm. That makes your number 89,643. <laughs> 
Look, I want to phone while I'm still young enough to hear who's talking. Is the telephone essential in your job? It most certainly is. What do you do for a living? I play the races. I'm sorry, young man. I'm sorry, but that doesn't qualify for immediate installation of a phone. Due to the extra load on our present facilities and the shortage of new equipment, emergency certificates get first attention. A doctor's certificate that proves a person is 100% incapacitated might help. Windy old birdie. <laughs> What is this incapacitated stuff? What's that? Incapacitated means that you're in such bad health you may need medical attention at any time of the day or night. Well, the shape I'm in, that ought to be easy. Look, I go pick up a wife and go and see my doctor, huh? <laughs> Hurry, Willie. Maybe we can get to the doctor's office before he closes yeah. today. Oh, look, Willie, there's a parking place. Yeah, there's a guy backing into it. I'm going to beat him to it. <laughs> Willie, don't try it. We'll have a wreck. Oh, no, we won't. What's this, Willie? <laughs> Fools you, isn't it? Your learner's permit. Yeah. <laughs> They'll give us a ticket for parking here. Oh, I don't see no red fire plugs, and I don't see no red zones. But, Willie, people don't park on the sidewalk. <laughs> well, there ain't no signs that says that I can't, either. Come on, let's go ahead and see the doc about getting a tow for you. Now, when you get into the doctor's office, look sick. So he'll give you a certificate for a telephone. Okay, give me a kiss, will you? Why, Willie? You said you wanted me to look sick, will you? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm Miss Duzik, the nurse. Do you have an appointment? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, but if you want to go anywhere, I'll break it. <laughs> Willie, aren't you forgetting where you are? No, I just forgot where you were. <laughs> Come this way. You can see the doctor now. Thank you. Ain't she pretty? Come in. Come in, Mr. Lump Lump. Uh, Dr. Dowd. Howdy doody. Howdy do. <laughs> Sit down, please. See what happened to you? Your clothes look terrible. Yeah, my wife left them lay on the floor last night. <laughs> well, wouldn't she pick them up? She couldn't. I was in them. <laughs> Mr. Lump Lump, precisely what did you want to see me about? Well, I want to see about a certificate, a uh, piece of paper for an emergency phone. Uh, I'm a sick man. I am. You're so sick. The life insurance salesman took back his calendar this morning. <laughs> well, why do you feel sick? What seems to be the trouble? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> well, if you can't breathe, how do you stay alive? Dog. Uh, now, I just don't think about it. <laughs> Last time you came to see me, I told you to drink eight glasses of water a day. That's what I've been doing. You've just been drinking water? Yeah. Or might spike it with a little something to kill the taste. <laughs> I'm sorry, Willie, but I can't give you a certificate for a phone. Well, uh, how can I carry on my business without a phone? You don't need one to carry on your business. Oh, yes, I do. Every week I got to call up the Social Security and see if my unemployment check is ready. <laughs> Willie, why don't you go home and sleep it off? Because I ain't tired of it yet. <laughs> now, look, I'm busy. Go on, get out of here. Look, I got to have a phone. My head keeps ringing all the time. I'm always trying to take my ears off the hook. I answer them. <laughs> I'm going to take your head off the hook if you don't get out of here. All right, you will help me get a phone. I'm going to take this one off your desk. Now, Willie, stop that. Yeah, now I got it. I got it. I got it. I got uh, it. You're not going to get through this door, Willie. I'll uh, go through the window with it. Then. Don't be silly. It's a three story drop. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you still know what you're doing? Yeah, but I'm doing it with a broken neck now. <laughs> Remember, medical science offers you proof positive. Remember, medical science offers you proof 
positive. No other leading cigarette is safer to smoke because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. Tyrone Power, star of 20th Century Fox's forthcoming The Razor's Edge, says, quote, I changed my mind about cigarettes after I saw the certified reports. Medical science has proved no other cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars, thus no other is safer to smoke. I'd rather have a Raleigh. Raleigh's are right. You're right, Tyrone Power. Raleigh's are right. So, friends, next time, try Raleigh's. Enjoy Raleigh's rich tobaccos, that smoother, milder, more satisfying Raleigh flavor. Remember, medical science now offers you proof positive. No other cigarette is safer to smoke because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. David Forrester and his orchestra now play... The Man I Love by George Gershwin. Telephone. After waiting a year and a half for a telephone, it really, you really appreciate it when it's finally installed. It makes you so happy that you forget all your troubles. Even Junior, the mean widow can. <laughs> Junior, where are you? 
if I tell you, you won't like her. <laughs> Junior, if you don't tell me where you are, I'll come after you. I oh, know you won't, kiddo. Eyes up on top of the garage roof. Please come down off the roof. You might fall on the driveway and crack the cement. Yeah. <laughs> well, you sure does that, me, don't you, huh? I have some candy for you. Oh, no, you ain't tricking me, kid out. Oh, <laughs> all right, just stay up there. The man's finally coming to install our new telephone, and I want you out of the way. No, I'll be right down, kid out. I will slide down the roof into my sandbox. You need to be careful. You might tear your trousers. Mm. What trousers? <laughs> Here. The glass. And your good play suit, too. Now, okay, kiddo. Where's my candy? Where's oh, my candy? Don't you. I have here a hairbrush and a piece of candy. Which do you think you deserve? Well, there's no doubt about it, Grandma. I deserve the hairbrush. You ought to beat me with an inch of me like climbing up there and taking chances like that. Spare no pain, boy. You see, I know it will wear you out, but go ahead. I want you to just beat me and beat me and beat me. Just beat me and beat me and beat me. Well, now you know how I feel, so just give me the candy. That's enough. Now you get into that house. Okay. Hey, who did you say was coming? The man to install our telephone. Oh. And if you'll behave, I'll give you a cupcake. When? If you're good, you'll get it for dessert. The big win or the little win? That all depends on how good you are. Crumbs again. <laughs> Boy, you sure is happy one today, Grandma. Oh, I'm so excited. Yes? Getting a phone these days is just like a blessed event. Really? Hey, Grandma, was I a blessed event? <laughs> no, you were a dirty trick. <laughs> I like that. The neighbors are applauding it. How do you like it? <laughs> Don't talk so loud. The neighbors are listening. Was you surprised when I was uh, arrived? Was the folks surprised? Was my mummy surprised? Yes. She was expecting a child. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes when you talk to me like that, I feel like running away with little orphan Annie. Nobody loves me. <laughs> I'm just a poor little orchid. Don't cry. I don't want it anywhere I know. Junior, you're going to cry. I'm going to cry. I poor baby. You're just a poor baby. Uh, would he like... Would he like 15 cents to get a soda? No. He would like 16 cents to the tax, you know. <laughs> bless his little heart. Yeah, bless his little heart. <laughs> Trying to trick me into something. Yeah, he's trying to trick you into something. No, no. <laughs> I knew I would carry this too far somehow. Uh-oh. There's the telephone man. I will go. I will go. We are going to get a telephone. We are going to get a telephone. Welcome to the House of Horrors, Dracula. Are you the man from the telephone company? Yes, I am. Yeah, I, my, my name's Junior. Well, Junior, <laughs> I think you're a nice little fella. I think you've got a lot to learn. <laughs> Hello. We, we've been expecting you. Yeah, for nearly two years. Yeah, you were just scared as butter, you know. Uh, you've had a telephone in here before, I understand. Yes, the box is right over there. Good. I'll have to open the box to check the wire. <laughs> It's full of marbles. Somebody's been in this box. Yeah, there must be pack rats around here. <laughs> pack rats. Them the little rats with packs on their back. Now, Junior. Junior, don't you mess to the phone, man. No, I... Oh, he's not bothering me. <laughs> I have a little boy just like him. Yeah? What reform school is he in? <laughs> Now, remember, Junior, you behave yourself. Mm -hmm. You know why we lost our phone before, don't you? No. You were always cutting the cord with my scissors. No. Oh, you were much younger yeah. then. You wouldn't do anything like that now, would you, Junior? No, I should say not. <laughs> cutting cords with scissors. <laughs> now it's because I was such a little child, you know. <laughs> I got bigger ideas now. <laughs> Just watch your step, young man. I'm going into the kitchen to prepare dinner. And, Junior, yeah? don't forget, I've got the hairbrush with me. I know, kiddo. You wouldn't look like your natural self without that thing in your mitts, you know. <laughs> oh, she's a sweetie, she is. I get on her nerves, but she is a sweetie. Oh, I love that grandma. You know, women sure cause a lot of trouble. Uh, she causes blisters. <laughs> 
Say, you know, you're a smart little fella. Yeah. What are you going to be when you grow up? Probably hung. <laughs> hey, what you doing now? What you doing? Uh, you just watch me closely, and yeah. I'll show you how I install the telephone. Oh. Hey, when you kneel down like that, and you feed out in the back like that, and you can't see what's going... Did anybody ever give you a hot foot? <laughs> no, indeed, Sonny. The guy doesn't live that would try doing that to me. <laughs> he talked like a stranger in town, don't you? Uh, you wouldn't think of giving me a hot foot, would you, Junior? No, I had doing it without thinking. <laughs> oh, uh, hand me that hammer over there. The hammer? Yes, give it to me, give it to me. Okay, you asked for it. <laughs> oh! Did, 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 did you do that on purpose? It slipped out of my hand. <laughs> Look at that lump on your cocoa there. Look at that cocoa. Ain't that a dandy? You like a match it up on the other side there? Uh? It slipped. Believe me, the hammer slipped. I will. Well, uh, all right. I believe you. You do? Yes, we all make mistakes. Not like I do. <laughs> well, there we are. Yes? Telephone's all connected. Well. What do you think of it? I don't think it's going to last long, do okay? <laughs> Now, I'm going outside and check the wires. I know you'll uh, keep your hands off it while I'm gone. <laughs> I might crisscross the wires a little, you know. Oh, no, you wouldn't do that, would you? <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep laughing, kiddo. That's all. You wait till you call up somebody and the guy who answers turns out to be you. <laughs> you'll find out, kiddo. Well, I'll trust you. Yeah. Oh, boy, here I is with a phone. <laughs> I shouldn't mess with it. And then again, I should. I can't learn to talk on them, you know. Then again, I don't know why I waste me time. I'm going to do it anyhow. <laughs> oh, boy. Boy, I'm going to have fun with this thing. I'm going to call up the fire department and the police department. Oh, boy, what possibility? What possibility? <laughs> I wonder if this thing works yet. I'm going to test it. Hello? 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 Sounds like somebody snoring on the other end. <laughs> Maybe there's a bee in it. Maybe there's a bee in it. Come on, get out of there. I'm making him think I'm a bitch. Come on, get out of there. I'm going to get you out of there before that man comes back. Boy, he'll be proud of me. Now, let's see. Where's the screwdriver and his hammer? I'm going to take this thing apart here. Get out of there. Where you be? Come on, bite, bite. Get out of there. Boy, it's putting up a great fight, ain't it? I got to eat more Wheaties. I got to turn this thing apart. Well, kid, everything ship shape, as we say in the Navy. I think it's snafu, as we say in the Cub Scout. What's going on in here? Good heavens, what's that mess on the floor? I'll give you three guesses. The telephone! Give that lady a box of Milky Way! Now you're going to get No, 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 no! I'd love to spank him, too. <laughs> Sorry, line is busy. <laughs> Remember, we're all back in the next few at the same time. Let's go from David Forster and his orchestra, Anita Alice, Brenna Felt, and Gigi Pearson, and yours truly, Rod O'Connor. Until next Tuesday, then. This is Red Skelton saying goodbye now, and thanks for listening. Last week was Brotherhood Week. Why not make every week? Brown and Williamson invite you to other good listening throughout the week. Here are the Raleigh Room, starring Hildegard tomorrow night, and people are funny with Art Linkletter Friday night. And return with Red Skelton next Tuesday. Red Skelton is heard in this program through the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor. Sir Walter Raleigh, that's the smoking tobacco superior on all counts. Blended from the finest, rich, ripe, burly tobacco. Sir Walter Raleigh. Mellowed with just a touch of rum to bring out a richer, fuller, more mellow flavor. Sir Walter Raleigh. Smokes all the way down to the bottom of the bowl. Never leaves a soggy heel in your pipe. Just a clean, dry ash. Yes, gentlemen, it all adds up to Sir Walter Raleigh. Next time, try Sir Walter Raleigh, the quality pipe tobacco of America. Red Skelton is brought to you by the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Company. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.